Okay, so this tutorial is going to go over uh, annotation, line weight, schedules, setting up sheet views, and then uh, also going through the process of printing a set. Uh, so the first thing we're going to start with is going through and setting up our annotation. So we're going to be going through and setting up door and window tags, uh, and then also showing you guys how to use the dimensioning tools. Uh, so let's go into a floor plan that we haven't actually gone and dimensioned that for. So there's a couple of really easy things that we can use to do this. Uh, so we're going to go under the annotate tab. We're going to first thing we're going to do is we're going to start to tag our spaces. So uh, you can tag by category. Oh, let me just do this real quick. And if it's done saving, uh, we can draw window tags manually. Uh, you can, this is going to point it towards the inside because our window is actually facing the wrong direction. So if we select this, we can invert this. Um, so make sure you guys try and get all these uh, right ahead of time. Again, I'm using a student model here to show you guys, so just want to make sure all of that stuff is facing out. And the way that you tell that again is uh, these arrows are going to be facing outward. Same with the walls, okay? So what we're going to do, you can do that manually, or if we just do tag all, we know that we want to tag everything for the windows and doors, we can come in here and we can go ahead and hit apply, and it's going to tag all the doors and saw those appear. And we can also do tag windows and hit apply and you can see all those windows are now tagged. Uh, we can also do stuff like the stair landing and, and, and all that. So you can start to see where that is actually uh, gone in here. So I'm gonna, I'll just leave that for now. So that's gonna be how you guys are gonna start to tag your windows. And you can tag a lot of different um, uh, elements in there. Um, and you're gonna be able to find and go through those categories later on uh, down the road when you actually are applying this in a project. Uh, the next thing we're going to go over is how to dimension, and so if we go to align dimension here, uh, we're going to go ahead, we can obviously just like in other features in here, we can go off center lines or faces, uh, that's going to be dependent on the wall type that you guys are going to be utilizing, uh, so I'll go ahead, I'm just going to use wall faces, uh, it's going to be individual references or entire walls, uh, we set the entire wall, uh, we can, so let's just grab it, just dimension the entire wall, actually here I have some. I can select the entire wall and it'll give me the entire dimension from edge to edge there. Then what I can do is I can also come in here and under the options tab turn on and measure the openings. Now this is centers and widths. Uh, that's going to be dependent on whether or not you're using a masonry wall that you're dimensioning or whether you're um, doing just like a regular wood construction. So if you're going to use centers for wood, you're going to use widths if you have brick. Okay, So you can select the wall we can start to pull out those dimensions as well. Okay, and you can notice that some of the things are going to start to interfere here. So we can take, uh, this, these guys are all starting to overlap and intersect. Let's go modify here, select that. We can start to pull these guys away. Pull this guy back. Okay. And so you guys are going to have to go through and clean up all of this. And you're going to do all sides of your elevation here. Um, so we should start to see a nice uh, dimension set in the round here. You're also going to be able to dimension your interior walls and I'm going to go ahead under options turn off those settings now and so we can come in here and dimension these things. And there were some issues with this, uh, the way that this thing is connected up. And let's go ahead and just do individual references. Well, anyways, once, if all your wall tags are actually in here working properly, you should be able to attach to those. Okay? And then, so we're going to be able to dimension the interior spaces as well. Alright, and so that's going to be the annotation component for tagging and dimensioning. Uh, the next thing we're going to go over is line weight. Uh, and so you're going to, under the Manage tab, you're going to go under Additional Settings, and you're going to see line weights here. This is going to adjust the global line weight settings for the entire document. Uh, here you're going to see all those variety of scales, and then you have 16 different line weights for each one of the, uh, the different components in here. And so we can start to adjust line weight 1, line weight 2, line weight 3. Um, the reality is if you're using any, really more than 6 to 8 line weights in your drawings, you're going to, I just don't, the, I've never seen a document that has more than those. So what we're going to do in here is we can start to adjust this, and actually I'm going to go ahead and just zoom in so we can start to see the effects of this. 
as we go through it. So if we go under additional settings and line weights. So line weight one, we can set that to be say 0.01, and we'll set this to be actually we'll leave that as 0.03. We hit apply. You can see that that's actually been updated here, uh, and. I'm going to also be sort of enabling you guys to, I'm going to see if we can get a hold of a set of firm line weights here so we can actually utilize uh, a more effective version of this so that we're not just uh, guessing and checking because that is typically what most firms have to go through. They have to do a guess and check process until the line weights actually read the way they want them to read. Uh, so that's step one in adjusting the line weights. Uh, step two is we need to go under the view tab and visibility graphics. And we actually, for whatever things we want to set in here, uh, we want to, and we should be able to go override, and then you can set the weights, and those numbers, the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way to 16, correspond with that. And so you can come in here and hit OK. And so that's for the projected lines, and for cuts, we can come over here and set that to 3. And you can see that those lines have been updated here. So we can select all these guys, override one. Oh. Three. Apply. And you'll note that, that when we're doing this, if we expand any of these guys, these guys have not been affected on the interior here. So hit OK. And now that's affected all of our document settings globally when we're looking at this. Okay, so it's important that you get your line weights right ahead of time um, before you start adjusting all that. But if we go now to our first floor plan, it's also been ha has these things embedded in it now. Okay, and, and our sections as well. So making sure that you guys are paying attention to that as a as a detail when you guys are organizing your content is going to be important. Okay. All right, so the next thing is I just want to show you briefly where the schedules are um, actually being calculated. If you scroll down on your project browser, uh, we have three different schedules that are automatically being organized here, room finish schedule, door schedule, and window schedule. Uh, each one of these guys is automatically being compiled by the uh, software. Uh, you'll note that window tags are all, uh, for each window that you have, it's going to tag each number that the same. Uh, because doors have little, uh, certain custom features like trim and um, threshold and things like that, each one of those, no matter what, is always going to have a custom door tag. So this is the difference between those two. Uh, and then you guys can have some room schedules uh, if you guys get into uh, some of the finishes and stuff. All right. Uh, the next thing is actually setting up your sheet views. And so if we go into this, I'll go ahead and I'll just delete that view. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is we can set up, if we go on to an empty sheet here, and I'm going to do this in a little bit in reverse here. This is what you're going to be looking at at your empty sheets. Uh, the first thing you want you to pay attention to is some of the project properties. And I went over this in another tutorial, but under the Manage tab, Project Information, we can start to plug in content. Um, Ed, Revit House. My initials, ah, I'm not dyslexic here, so we hit OK, and we should see some of that information actually update in here, and I didn't hit any of those things that were actually in the view. Client name. Issue date. Let's go. So when we assign the project. Okay, and you see those things update in here. And so then the next thing is we're going to be able to start to place drawings in the sheet. Um, now, when you guys are going through this, you should organize your sheets uh, in a pretty as organized a fashion as you can. And there are rules for that. The rules that uh, I'm familiar with are 
So we're going to have all the project information. You're going to have um, general information about what's on the sheet on another column here if necessary. So for instance, you have a, t a material call out um, that's way too long just to put on the, on the drawing. You'll have a tag and then that'll be associated with content that's going to be in this pane right here. And then uh, the way that I've been instructed on laying out drawings is that you're going to place a drawing in the bottom left hand corner, work this way, work this way, work this way. So it goes left to right from bottom up. Okay. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to place a one of our views. So we have our wall section here. And so if we go to our wall section A10, we click and then just drag and dump and then place and it's going to be there. Okay? So you've gone ahead and organized all your views so it should look something like this when you're done going through this. And we set the resolution. Everything is derivative of the view. Uh, and we only have a cutting plane here, and I'll show you how to adjust that here shortly. So we have this guy. Uh, when you guys are going through this, you will want to turn on uh, a guide grid so that you can make sure, and we'll, I've already set one up, you can create a new one. Uh, but that way you can ensure that you're actually aligning your drawings up in the same location, so your drawings will start to read consistently based on the grid that you guys have produced. Okay. And so then we can come in, and if you want to turn that off under the sheet properties, down here, the other, you can turn that off. Okay? All right, and so that's going to be how you guys are going to place some of your um, your drawings on here and getting that stuff um, set up. And again, so if we want to hide these elevation lines and we want to ch change all this stuff, we can start to pull those away um, from the view itself. So if we come in here and take these guys and hide that element. Shift, we can deselect our site. We will see that update in our wall section view. Okay, so we can start to do material callouts and all of that. All right, so if we scroll up, what we should be able to do now is uh, the next step of this is if we need to adjust this, like for instance, our floor plan view. Uh, sometimes you're going to have floor plans like this that are going to sit that are just a little bit too big on this and so we're going to need to rotate those views occasionally. Um, this is really, really easy. The way that you do that is if you go into the actual view and under here, down here at the bottom, follow my mouse, show the crop region and select this, we can then rotate this. 90 degrees, and then when we go into our first floor plan, you'll see that updated. And you're going to want to make sure that you uh, set up and organize your drawings accordingly so that we can do this, okay? And you'll note that the crop region is, sh region is showing on this. Once you're done with that, you need to come back into your drawing because it's visualized here and turn it off. Okay, so when we go into first floor plan, there you go. We can start to see that stuff set up. Okay. All right, and so that's going to be all of the, the sheet views and project information. The last thing we want to do is, if we want it ready to print our set, we can go to File, Print Setup. And the first thing you want to do is we want to set this up for tabloid or whatever it is, the paper size that you're going to print to. Uh, we're going to center. All this looks good. So you guys should get it to match this screen. Those of you guys working on the project anyways. And then if you go to print, uh, first thing you need to do is you can, you're going to come down here, print range. So you hit select. And if we go to in session, it's going to show all of the views and all the sheets. So if you want to print a sheet or a view, we can do that. For, for instance, we're getting ready to print our set. We don't need any of the views. And we'll probably at some point want all of the sheets. So we'll just check all. Okay, so we see all those. And then we hit OK. And we'll call this set two. And so it's been saved, and you see that updated right there. Uh, the second thing you need to make sure that you do is you want to make sure that instead of creating separate files, you combine and create one as a single pamphlet, unless you want separate individual sheets, which uh, sometimes contractors and things like that will want uh, individual pull sheets pulled out of the set. Okay, so then you hit OK. And I'm printing to a PDF right now. Hit yes. 
Um, it's going to err, uh, err out and say, do you, do you have things hidden on some of the views? Uh, I'm assuming that you've done that intelligently. Um, I, I'm, I always, this is the way that I use Revit, so we can go ahead and hit yes. It's okay to leave those things hidden. Uh, this is Aaron's project, so we'll go ahead and hit yes. And it's going to produce a PDF. You can see it flashing through all the views. And all of our documents have been placed in there. And you note that I have not organized all this, but all this stuff is in here. Okay? So that's going to be the basics of how you guys are going to go through this. All right. Oh, here. Well, I guess it makes sense if I do this at a scale you guys can see. So I'll just cycle through each one of these. And so that's how you guys are going to go through and produce a print set. And you can see that this is garbage right here. But if we zoom in, use our hand tool, you can see that as we zoom in, the line weight stuff that we did has been carried over and carried through. Okay. Uh, and like I said, I'll, I'm going to try and get us a, a set from a firm so that we can actually utilize um, a good set of line weights. All right, that's it.